What's going on everyone LA Sports back with another video. In this video I'm going to be going over the New York Giants offseason and a realistic overview of what I think is going to happen as of course it's going to start off very soon as the Giants are already requesting interviews on tons of guys to be the GM and it's very good to see that there aren't any in-house guys in that of course Kevin Abrams he might just get um, you know an interview because He's Kevin Abrams and has been getting interviews with the Giants for the last 15 years. I don't think he's going to be the GM. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be talking about who I think the GM will be next season, uh, who I think the coach will be next season, the offensive coordinator, of course, defensive coordinator, um, some cuts, um, some free agent signings, and, of course, who we're going to draft. And let me start off by saying right from the beginning, Daniel Jones will be the starting quarterback week one. Let's get that right out of the way. That's going to happen. But let's start off with the general manager. Now, who's going to be the general manager? And I think it's going to be uh, Joe Sh Shane. Um, Joe Shane from the Buffalo Bills. He's the assistant GM there right now, and he's done a fantastic job with them. Uh, with them, he apparently he had a huge thing to do with them drafting Josh Allen. Um, apparently, that was a, you know influ a decision influenced by him heavily. Um, and the Giants are already. Um, they already requested, he was the first guy they requested to interview, so it seems like that is a very strong candidate, and in my opinion, I think that's who the GM is going to be, and as a fan, I couldn't be happier. I hope Joe Shane is the future GM of this team because he's a smart guy, he's a young guy, and he seems like he knows exactly what he's doing. So I think Joe Shane will be the New York Giants general manager in about a week, maybe two. What will he decide to do in terms of the head coach? And... That's a question that, you know, a lot of people have right now. What's the current state of Joe Judge? And I think that he will elect to keep Joe Judge for at least one more season. Um, and if it, you know, if everything, you know, all hell breaks loose next season, I think he, uh, you know, he, you know, he walks Joe Judge right out of here. Um, but I think he's going to give him a chance. Um, next season to see what he could do with a healthy team hopefully when he drafts the players Joe, Joe Shane drafts the players with you know some scouts that he brings in um, all that stuff um, so I think that's what happens there in terms of the offensive coordinator position uh, or you know uh, coaching spot um, I think that is going to go to uh, Ken Dorsey. He is the current quarterback coach in Buffalo. He was a quarterback coach in Carolina with Cam Newton. So it's clear that this guy has been very good with quarterbacks and that would be very good um, for Daniel Jones. And, you know, the development that we all hope as Giant fans, he, you know, he takes a leap next season. Being that Ken Dorsey's a young guy, just 40 years of age, um, you know, he's in Buffalo, um, you know, right now with Joe Shane, maybe he recruits his guy from there. That's what I honestly think. I think that that's exactly what happens. I think Joe Shane's going to come into the situation um, hoping Daniel Jones proves next season that he's the guy. I think that's what happens when Joe Shane comes in. And I think he brings in a guy who's done really well with quarterbacks, particularly um, Josh Allen and Cam Newton. I think he brings him in to try and develop Daniel Jones very quickly. And I think he would be a very good play caller. Um, in my opinion, he's a younger guy, just 40 years old. He's got a, um, he's probably got a newer school of mind compared to Freddie Kitchens, Jason Garrett, and some of the other disastrous offensive coordinators we've had here over the past couple of years. So I think Ken Dorsey is going to be the offensive coordinator, especially because of the ties he has to Joe Shane. And I think that that would be a very good decision because he's a smart guy. And I think he would know exactly what to do, especially with Daniel Jones. As for the defensive coordinator, I think if Joe Judge stays on, Patrick Graham stays on, unless he gets a head coaching position, but I don't think he will. I think there, I don't think there's enough. Um, I don't think that right now that there's enough uh, openings for Patrick Graham to have uh, a spot. I mean, we know Brian Flores is very well going to be a head coach. Um, same could go for Zimmer. Maybe someone is out of their mind and they take Nagy. It doesn't sound like the Jaguars are going with Patrick Graham. Uh, Dan Quinn's a name that's been tossed around. Doug Peterson. So there's there's guys out there that I think uh, teams would prioritize over Patrick Graham. So if I had to guess, he remains on as the defensive coordinator and the assistant coach to Joe Judge, which I think is a good decision. I really like Patrick Graham. You can't you know fault him for anything this season. Um, you know the defense is what it is. I mean. It's very hard to be a top defense when they're always on the field, right? The offense just didn't help out the defense at all, created very minimal 
Uh, it, it turned the ball over a lot, and it created very minimal uh, rest time for this defense. And, you know, we got behind right away and out of the gate, and it was just tough for the defense. So I think Patrick Graham is the right call for the defensive coordinator spot. And I think him and Joe Judge are kind of tied together. Whatever happens with one happens to the other. And I think they're both kind of on, you know, a leash, and, you know, they're really on their last legs. And it'll probably be their last shot here in New York. Let's get into some cuts. Um, I'm going to have three in this video, and I think they're pretty obvious ones. First one's Kyle Rudolph. I don't think that that's a question. Um, I think that's pretty clear. I mean, you save $5 million if you cut him. I think that's exactly what the New York Giants do. They save the $5 million there with cutting Kyle Rudolph. As for Sterling Shepard, I think he's cut as well because of the injury. I think that has a huge thing to do with it. Um, I think if Sterling Shepard doesn't go down, I think there's a much better chance he is back next season because you only save realistically four and a half million. It would be a very unfortunate way of Sterling Shepard to leave the New York Giants. He's a fan favorite and a lot of people like him, including myself, but I just think that the Giants are kind of, um, they, they need that four and a half million and, you know, he's not going to play next season. So, you know, he's going to be a free agent more than likely. Uh, well, yeah, he will be after next season. He more than likely won't play next year, so you'd just be keeping $4.5 million for absolutely no reason. So I think, unfortunately, Sterling Shepard um, is cut, and then that leaves more plays, more room for Tony Galladay. And hopefully with Ken Dorsey, if he is the offensive coordinator, he can scheme up plays for them. And then the last one, the last cut I have, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to hate Joe Shane, but it will happen. Uh, Riley Dixon will be gone. Um, they're going to cut him and save $3 million. Riley Dixon sucks. I don't know who in their right mind ever, you know, what, why we even brought him in in the first place. He's been awful. He's going to be cut, and I think we will draft um, a punter in with one of our last picks because that'll be the cheapest option more than likely. And um, realistically, I mean, you got to get a guy like Riley Dix Dixon to have a bad punter. So Dixon will be out the door. Um, and then there's a couple more restructures and, you know, cuts the Giants can make. Potentially Martinez, depending on the injury, potentially Bradbury. Um, you know, there, there, there's some guys we could definitely still cut. But these are the three main ones I think will happen. As to the Giants free agents, I think they will resign two guys. And that's going to be, they're, they're both going to be on one-year deals. They're going to kind of be proven deals. They're going to be guys that have shown flashes of good performances throughout their career. And I think the Giants are going to sign them to one-year deals to try and get that back. And that's Jalen Smith and Lorenzo Carter. Carter, of course, the edge rusher. And Jalen Smith, the linebacker. Um, most people know him from playing with the Dallas Cowboys. We signed him a couple weeks ago. He's been very good in the... Uh, time he's been on the field for the Giants, uh, even though it's really hard to pick up on the good things the past few weeks when, we be getting, when we've been getting destroyed. But I think these are the two guys we do bring back. As for free agents on the outside, they will either draft or sign a tight end. I don't know who it's going to be because Evan Ingram will walk. Um, and we're going to need um, a guy ahead of Caden Smith to be the tight end. So depends i don't know who that's going to be it could be a guy like eric ebron jared cook uh and david and joku we could draft a guy in the second or third round even fourth round so there's a lot of options there but we need a better backup quarterback especially because of the injury concerns with daniel jones and i think joe shane's going to come in here and do that he's going to bring in another guy from buffalo mitch trubisky um mitch trubisky's right now the backup to josh allen he was of course with buffalo he was a starter for a while he was drafted in, or sorry, Chicago, he was drafted in the first round. Um, and he's been a guy who's shown flashes. He's a pro bowler, and I think the Giants bring him in. Now, Giants fans might jump off the hook if we sign Mitch Trubisky because, oh, he's going to start over Jones. That won't happen. They're going to bring in Mitch Trubisky to be, you know, somewhat of a threat to Jones. And if you start playing well, we're going to put in Mitch Trubisky early. Jones isn't going to be babied around anymore. He's coming into his fourth season. It's do or die for Jones if he doesn't perform he won't be back. So I think the Giants get a very, you know, very good backup, backup who can play the game of football, not like Mike Glennon or Jake Fromm. I think they bring in Mitch Trubisky. And then another move I think they make is they sign an offensive lineman, maybe two. I'm just saying a couple moves in free agency. I know they make a lot of small signings, but I'm just saying a couple of bigger ones. And I think that's bringing in the current Tampa Bay Buccaneers right tackle, Alex Kappa. Um, I think this is this would be a very good signing for the Giants. I think he would really help out um, on the offensive line. He could play the right tackle, right guard. Um, 
you know, he could do many things. So I think that this move definitely makes sense. If you bring in Alex Kappa, um, it, he provides a little bit of flexibility on that O-line. And now all of a sudden you have two good pieces on the O-line, Alex Kappa, Andrew Thomas. And if Nate, Nick Gates come back, comes back, not that we're going to rely on him, especially after the injuries, but he could be another guy. Um, and then that leads me into the next point, who we're going to draft I'm going to come out here right now and I'm going to say Evan Neal will be a, New, be a New York Giant at number five on draft night. I'm hoping I'm right, and this would be absolutely key. So if the Giants get Kappa, get Neal, um, our offensive line will all, all of a sudden look pretty decent. And I would imagine you may even sign another depth guy, Lakin Tomlinson. Maybe they go for the big shot at uh, on, you know for the offensive line. They signed Ryan Jensen from Tampa Bay, uh, the center. Um, it could be like a three-year or four-year at $10 million per year kind of deal. Um, but, you know, back to my point, if we get Kappa and Evan Neal, you're looking at an offensive line that looks like uh, having Andrew Thomas on the left side, and then on the right side you got Evan Neal and Alex Kappa. And then, you know, in the middle you can use Nick Gates or Shane Lemieux. You take a chance, you know, who knows. But I think the Giants will ultimately sign another offensive lineman, but I think... For the purpose of the video, I think we're going to go with Alex Kappa and Evan Neal. I think these are two offensive linemen we'll bring in. And then with the second first-round pick, I think the Giants will bring in N'Kobe Dean, the national uh, championship title winner. Uh, last night, of course, N'Kobe Dean won the national championship with Georgia. He's a stud. He's a linebacker that's going to come in and, and fit right in. Um, and he's going to play with a former Bulldog, Tay Crowder in the middle, Jalen uh, Smith, Blake Martinez, um, and I, I think that really strengthens the Giants' middle um, linebacking spot, and I think N'Kobe Dean will be a stud. He's my favorite player in the draft, and I hope that the New York Giants snag him with Joe Shane on draft night. But that's all I got in this video, guys. You guys let me know down below in the comments section your thoughts on my you know kind of predictions in the offseason, what I think is going to happen. I kept it realistic as possible. Um, but you guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section. What would you keep? What would you change? And what do you think is going to happen in this offseason? I'm voting and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we get Joe Shane in as the GM for the New York Giants. But as always, guys, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys know. We'll see you guys on the next video. Let's go Giants.